Well, welcome. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Tim McKee. I'm the CEO of the Olathe Chamber of Commerce. And welcome to our Zoom call this morning. We are, as we have been doing um, through the pandemic, offering information to our businesses to help them um, get through this very challenging time. Um, on the call with me is Shannon Latham, our Director of Economic Development, and she will be helping uh, me today um, with the call with our speakers. Um, today, we've got a very interesting call um, about business assistance for companies through Johnson County and the CARES Act for Small Business Grant Program. And you're going to obviously hear more about that. But first, today, we have a sponsor of today's call. And uh, with us on the call is Ali Schnelli. Um, she's the marketing manager of Trout Beeman and Company. And Ali, can you introduce yourself and tell, tell us a little bit about your company? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure to be with you all today. Um, as Tim said, I'm Ali Schnelli. I'm the marketing manager at Trout Beeman and Company. We're CPAs and business advisors. Um, we have offices in Harrisonville, Missouri, and Olathe, Kansas. Um, we've been providing tax, audit, and business advisory services to clients on both sides of the state line across uh, Kansas and Missouri since 1972. So we've got a long legacy that we're very proud of, a legacy of excellence and uh, client longevity. And so we're very proud of that. Um, what I want to kind of get into today is, is our business advisory services. And I, I just wanted to kind of explain exactly what that is. And, the services that we provide our clients can be anywhere from uh, upper level strategic planning to tax planning yearly, um, down to the nitty gritty everyday accounting services and kind of outsourcing your accounting and bookkeeping services to us. And we feel, you know, as business advisors, that's very important for small businesses because, you know, as we've seen over the last few months with the pandemic and, and the, um, uh, COVID-19 relief that we're seeing, a lot of businesses can apply for PPP and, the, and what we're going to be talking about today. And a big component of that is keeping uh, accurate, uh, up-to-date records um, and the importance of that so that you can provide the documentation that you need to um, receive that loan, you know, receive PPP forgiveness and, you know, other, other stuff like that. And so what we do for our clients is that we take that on, we take that burden on for our small business clients, because we know how hard it can be to uh, run a business and still try to keep up with that, the financials and day-to-day -day, uh, accounting things. So um, with that, I will uh, turn it back to Tim. I will put my contact information in the chat, and I'll, uh, you can also find us at tbcode.net, and you can also find us on the Olathe Chamber website directory under accounting services. and um, Enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Tim. Allie, thank you. And thank you for sponsoring this. And thank you for being a chamber member. Um, well, today um, we have our speaker today is uh, Jeff Shackelfer. Jeff is CEO, President and Executive Director of the Enterprise Center of Johnson County and Director of Mid-America Angels. Um, Jeff is responsible for the Mid-America Angels and Foundation Innovation Fund, both programs of ECJC. Um, uh, he drives efforts to secure new capital options for early stage companies throughout the Midwest um, region. Prior to joining ECJC, Shackelford spent the past five years helping early stage entrepreneur, entrepreneurs move forward um, to start new businesses and create jobs as the executive director of Kansas City's Digital Sandbox. And we've had a lot of uh, partnerships um, through both the city and the chamber with Jeff on um, with Digital Sandbox, and it's a wonderful program. Um, he also, prior to ECJC, co-founded Birch Telecom in uh, co-founded Birch Telecom in 1997 and Tech Guys in 2002. Um, Mr. Shackelford is a successful entrepreneur with over 30 years of experience in telecommunications and informational technology. So, Jeff, please take it away and and help explain the program um, that we have. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to, um, to be part of your guys' meeting this week um, to talk about the um, Small Business Grant Program. And so I'm going to give a real brief kind of uh, background of where it came from, um, and then I'm going to share my screen, go over the really just three eligibility requirements 
uh, to apply for the $10,000 grants. And then we'll walk through the online application itself um, to apply, it will be online. That will be opening up November 4th at 10 a.m. And uh, there'll be a link published to that. Uh, please don't try before, it won't be open. Um, uh, so you'll be um, spending, not, not spending your time wisely. Um, you know, the Johnson County uh, government itself received a significant amount of money from the CARES uh, Relief Act, the federal dollars that were provided to help um, cities and counties and even businesses survive the COVID crisis that we're currently going through. A portion of those funds have been allocated now for a grant program for the small Johnson County small business community. And in this case, uh, between one and 50 employees uh, with the opportunity to apply for and receive a, a one-time $10,000 grant. And it is a grant. This is not a loan. This is, does not have to be forgivable. Um, any of those requirements. It is, uh, it's, it has to be directed towards either expenses um, that were directly uh, uh, direct uh, caused by COVID and or revenue loss over, over a specific time period. And we'll go through that. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick, but go ahead. And Jeff, Jeff, one thing that I, I forgot to state was that if anyone on the call has a question, please feel free to ask it in the chat, even if it's during any of part of the presentation. And actually Jeff and I were talking about this earlier. If you have a question about any part of it, please ask it at that particular time. And we'll try and Jeff has no problems with us stopping and, and asking a question. So please, if you have this also, and I <laughs> neglected to say this, we are recording this. So if, um, you know, and we'll try and go back and answer the questions, even if we don't get it to Jeff today, and it will be on um, our website as well too. So sorry, Jeff, go, on, go right That's ahead. That's okay, I appreciate it. And please, yeah, ask the questions as we go through things. Uh, I think that'd be more um, effective than we all wait to the end and then have to jump back and forth. So I'm gonna share my screen at this time. So give me just half a second here. Um, start here. And can you see that? Yes, yes, Great. go right ahead. I'm just gonna take about 30 seconds because I've had some people ask, well, how did, how did the Enterprise Center in Johns County end up being the entity that's um, implementing the program the applications um, and so on. Uh, this was a project that um, the strike team was formed. There were 16, 18 of us um, on that team, 10 and was on as were some of the other folks representing the chambers and the business community in Johnson County. And we all kind of jointly developed the concept of how quickly could we, could we get some kind of relief out to our small business community that we do know is, is suffering um, through this um, pandemic. Well, the Enterprise Center has been around about 25 years. We are um, uh, the primary business um, accelerator, whatever you want to call us, for the county. And it became pretty obvious that we, as that entity, we seem to be the most logical one to then um, implement the program. That said, we are working closely with all of the chambers across um, the county to ensure all businesses across Johnson County, all types of businesses have the opportunity um, to apply for these grants. Um, so I wanted to make sure uh, people understood we're trying to reach all small businesses as many as possible across the county. Um, uh, working with, with all of these chambers like this and the others. So with that, I'm going to jump into, there's really three requirements. Um, as I mentioned, it's a $10,000 grant. Um, the county has allocated $13.5 million in grant funding. So simple math will tell us we're looking at about we're looking at 1,350 grants to be given out. So with that said, we anticipate more applica applications than, than we will be allowed to or have the funding to give out grants. So um, the eligibility is you must be located in Johnson County and you will have to upload documentation to support that. So that could be um, a lease, uh, rental agreement, uh, a utility bill that has the name of your company and the address showing that you are located in Johnson County. One to 50 employees. So we are trying, we are limiting this um, to the small business community. What'll be required there is simply an employee roster and all we really need is first name and last name. We do not want social security. 
We don't want any of those things. So simple first name, last name to just verify uh, the number of employees that you've stated you have. Um, then when we get to the expense side, it's any expense that was incurred between March 1st and December 30. And I've had a number of people say, how could I have an expense through December 30 of 2020 when it's only October? Um, some of you, some businesses uh, may have had to subscribe or sign up for a service that required you to sign a term. For instance, um, if you're sanitizing your office and the commercial company said, we're happy to come in and completely sanitize, but we need a 12 month agreement. You are, you are paying that. You can expense, um, you can use those expenses through December 30 of 2020. And that's not a typo. I know there's 31 days in December. This is our federal government at work for whatever reason, they said the cutoff is December 30. Another example, to somebody about is my workers had to move um, to remote locations to their houses. I had to um, up my bandwidth, put in some VPN servers, so on and so forth. So that bandwidth cost with your internet provider was probably on a term basis. So again, you can, ex you can use those expenses through December 30 um, to, uh, as, to show um, why you need to get a grant. The other side of that is a revenue loss that you've experienced um, 2020 over 2019. So if you see um, the dates there, um, you need to be able to put, provide some documentation to show my business suffered a revenue loss um, over that period compared to that same period in 2019. Now that can be a simple P&L statement out of your QuickBooks or um, with Allie and her company with the, your accounting service, just something that shows us um, in 2019 during this period, I did X and in that same period in 2020, it's X minus quite a bit. The combination of expenses and revenue loss need to total at least $10,000. The grants that we are giving out are $10,000. They're not variable. So if you were to show $6,800 in, in expenses and revenue loss, you're not going to qualify because you didn't get to $10,000. Okay. Jeff, Jeff, there was a question on that that we had. Um, and I think this goes to the time frame. Um, you know, a lot of people, um, they were saying, why the end of October 31st, if we haven't gotten to, you know, um, for some people, you know, they may not have um, gotten to that point or don't know how much that loss is, you know, October 31st is really close to the application date. Right. Um, is, can you answer that or, or does it, or is it just any loss of $10,000 within that, it's in, that time frame here? Over, over that period of March 1st um, through October 31st for the revenue loss, we tried, to, we tried to push it as far as we could up to the application date. So in other words, um, if, you, if, if you had a contract to do some work through um, let's say through the end of the year, and it was a monthly contract. And that company has contacted you and said, you know what, we're, we, we shut the doors or we're temporarily closed or whatever. So we don't need your service. You could use documentation to support you lost the revenue from the contract through October 31st. So Jeff, that, so that being said, you don't have to go back, look at your revenue from March to October. No, any any $10,000 loss, Tim, in that period, in that period. Okay. So it could be, you could have had, you could have, you could say, and let's hope not, but you could say hypothetically you had a $50,000 loss, but if you had documentation to quickly show 10,001, that's all we need. We, okay. we don't need beyond, we don't need beyond that. And, and remember this is a, it can be expenses that you, and those, but I will remind you, those expenses need to be directly related to COVID. So you can't, you can't show us documentation that, Hey, I just, I upped my inventory because I, I wanted to have more inventory on hand. It needs to be directly related, right? So let's take uh, PPE that you had to buy, masks, shields that you had to put up at a, at a register or, or in a, wherever you interface with customers. Um, remote expenses, right? My employees have to work from home and, and you know what? Um, they didn't have iPads, laptops or anything and I had to buy that equipment so they could work from home. My internet connection had to be bumped up. My IT guy had to do some work to increase a firewall. Um, any of those expenses related to COVID, plus if you need to show revenue loss to get to $10,000, it's additive, right? So 
either or issue then, Jeff. It's it's not necessarily so because I, I guess the question is, what if you don't show revenue loss per the company per se, other than at some point during that time frame, you just had ten thousand dollars in expenses? Is that that's that? Fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. You can, if you could give us ten thousand dollars in expenses, or you can give us ten thousand dollars in revenue loss, or you can give us. 5,000 in expenses and 5,000 in revenue loss. We just have to have support documentation. And when I say we, believe you me, it's not me wanting to collect this. This is really a requirement of the Federal CARES Act to protect the county. The money okay. to the county, the county has to use it in um, based on the restrictions of the federal program. Um, if they don't, they're subject to an audit and could have to give money back. And so therefore, um, we tried to figure out if there was a way to, to do this program without having to collect any data whatsoever. And it just wasn't possible um, because of the audit parameters that we know uh, will come at the end of this. So those are the three requirements, be in Johnson County, one to 50 employees and be able to document um, some, some version of $10,000 in either expenses um, or revenue loss or a combination of the two. Okay. The online grant application will open November 4th at 10 a.m. The, the grants will be decided for obviously on eligibility and then first come first served based on a timestamp on the online application system. So as I mentioned, we're anticipating more applicants, more applications than, than 1,350. So it is gonna be necessary and we're trying to get, make sure everybody understands, get that documentation together now, get it scanned into a file, so that because the application you'll see in a few minutes when I walk through, the application starts out by getting you through these requirements and right then and there it's saying, upload the, file, upload the documents. So, if, so, so we're telling people, have them scanned and ready to go so you can get through this application and get into that, hopefully that first 1,350 that are eligible and you'll, you'll be receiving a grant. Um, Jeff, that is a link. Go ahead. I'm sorry, there are a couple of questions coming in about this, this portion. So okay. can we just fire match it? Yes. Um, one was, um, and I think we've heard this, um, we do our own bookkeeping and they're not audited financials or audited, are unaudited spreadsheets acceptable? And what do we need there for, for this? Um, you know, their unaudited spreadsheets will be acceptable. Um, I would encourage if you have any secondary documentation and that could be anything from a copy of a, of, a, of a bank register showing uh, relating to the expense side. Um, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to be fair and understanding and knowing a lot of small businesses, let's say even sole proprietorships and so on, don't always have um, full accounting systems behind that. So what I'm at, what we'd say is provide us with enough information that um, a reasonable person would say, okay, you've got your support documentation, okay? So if it's, if it's, if it's so, so uh, generic that we can't make heads or tails of it um, would be an issue, but if it's clear and, and you've clearly shown, made the effort and shown here's the revenue in, in 2019 over, over 2020, um, if it's expenses, we would expect to see some copy of receipts and some, some proof of payment. So if you were in a accounting system that could be a, a, a accounts payable register, anything along those lines, if not, um, I would say err on the side of uploading more as opposed to less. Um, so I, I didn't mean to be vague there, but uh, we will accept it. You know, we're not requiring you to be running a, a full scale accounting system, uh, though as the business grows, I would encourage it. <laughs> um, <laughs> as would Allie, uh, it, it will help in the number. You know, um, don't, you know, this stuff is encrypted and, and um, will be protected. So if it's tax documents along those lines that you, that you think would help your case, then don't be afraid to do that. Um, we are fully encrypting and protecting the data. We will have to um, store that, but it'll be stored in a very um, uh, uh, protected and secure um, environment. Any other uh, tips? Yeah, um, this, is, uh, uh, this is more about location and I'm just gonna read it to you. Um, <laughs> Um, they state they formed their LLC in December 2014 in Missouri. They opened their business um, on September 5th, 2017 in Lenexa, Kansas. 
and have been located at the same uh, location since that day. They state that their partner that manufactures, stores, carries insurance, and ships their products has the lease on the location in his company's name. Part of our cost per unit produced goes into our overhead for storage insurance lease at his business site. How and or what do we upload for documentation required? Um, I assume this is about you know, proving that they're located here in Johnson County. Um, if, I, if I understood um, everything that you just said, I'm assuming then they do not, as I mentioned, a utility bill with the name of the company and the Johnson County address would suffice. But I don't know based on what, based on the limited information there, if that company name is in a dip, if that's in a different company name than the one applying. Um, well, yeah, it's a little hard to decipher yeah. that. And I, um, you know, and actually, Jeff, I assume that if they have questions, they can yeah. contact you at ECJC directly. Is that correct? Yeah. If you see at the bottom there, any additional, any questions that we don't answer today, or you just want to ask them offline, send an email to info at ecjc.com. We've got a number of us monitoring that, and we've been answering questions since we announced the program. That is the best way to get your question answered. So they could send an email to that address there at the bottom, and then we'll get back to them directly. Great. Okay. Great. Yep. Um, and, and to mention, if you go to the uh, Enterprise Center of uh, Johnson County, the ecjc.com, we have uh, two documents. We have the frequently asked questions document that we try to continue to add to as we get the questions that you'll be able to go through. And then we've got a template of the online application. So the actual, um, it's, it, it'll look a little rough, but it's the, it, it shows you all the fields and data that you will need to fill out your application. Okay. Jeff, there's another question about the number of employees. Mm -hmm. um, it, um, it's stating, um, is the one to um, 50 employee threshold just relating to a single business location in Johnson County even if a business has more employees at another location, um, or is it more than 50 employees company wide, regardless of how many uh, locations? Yeah, you know, this came up, and, and Tim, I think you remember, we had a lot of yeah. discussion about this. Um, yeah. First of all, you know, the, the, the intent behind this was just to help our small businesses, truly small businesses. Um, we bantered back and forth on where to put that limit of employees. The yep. intent of the program would be those businesses that have less than 50 employees, full-time employees in total. So if you were in a retail business and had four locations and you told up, so look, I don't, I only have, you know, 28 full-time employees at my four locations. Great. But if you were a, a Taco Bell franchisee and you had 18 loc or eight locations across um, Johnson County and you've got, you know, 70 employees, that's not who we're, who this program is intending to help because we think that those, those businesses probably had a better opportunity to utilize PPP, the idle loans and the other programs, as well as probably have a, a banking relationship that could give them some opportunity to, for, for some help through this. We really are targeting a true small business that said, look, um, Maybe they didn't have a banking relationship. And so the, the, the PPP, the idle world got um, eaten, used up before they could get to it. So, or, or for whatever reason, we're, and we know that the, the $10,000 isn't a huge sum of money, but it, it's an attempt to, to help as many small businesses across the county with some form of relief, whether that's helping them pay a month's rent, whether that's helping them, you know, uh, continue to try to pay the, the, the payroll for their employees and so on. So um, th this was designed for the businesses who had less than 50 employees in total. And, and Jeff, one of the questions, it's related to this, um, is, is the 50 employees full-time equivalent? I assume that is. I mean, you know, um, there's some that may have part-time employees. Can you address that issue as well? Yes, when we it's designed at full time equivalents. So okay. even, even you know some some businesses may contract uh, with W you know W uh, uh, ten ninety nine folks 
um, for whatever reasons, for whatever reason. But again, we're really trying to help the, you know, there's, depending on how you count it, there's probably almost 21,000 businesses in Johnson County and 95 plus percent um, have less than 50 employees. So um, it's a big pool. And therefore, you know, we, we're, we're, we're trying to reach as many as possible. So it is, um, our intentions are less than 50 full-time employees. Um, Jeff, um, quick question. Yeah. Um, somebody asked if you, um, he, they weren't sure if you just said if you received PPP funding or you're not eligible for this grant. No, that's not true. Okay. Not they true. Were. And, and we, we, we uh, you'll see when I jump to the application, we make sure to point that out. It's, you could have gotten PPP, you could have gotten an IDA loan, you could have gotten a Kansas City Community Relief, um, some money from there, so on and so forth. We ask, we ask about that and we ask you to tell us how much. The stipulation is, for those expenses or revenue loss that you used PPP, IDLE, or some other program, those expenses and revenue loss aren't eligible for this program. So, in other words, trying to prevent the whole double dipping of I've already got I've already got reimbursed for all of my mask and all of my sanitation, sanitation or uh, uh, disinfectant and so on and so forth. I've used those expenses from the other program, so it. What, what, you know, and for most businesses, I think that money has run out. So they shouldn't have any problem having additional expenses to show up to $10,000. But it does not, it does not make you ineligible for this. Jeff, why don't we move on so that we can get through all the thing and then we'll go back because I think a lot of these questions are relevant to the end. Okay. So I just want to make sure we, we get through the application and then we can go back. I'm going to stop sharing real quick because I've got to jump to another um, app to the application itself. So give me half a second here. There we go. Can you guys see this? Yes. So this is the online site. We used a third party, a company called Formstack um, to build the app online application. And we've tried to build in as much um, intelligence, uh, if you will, to help people get through. So you would see a, a opening page like this. Uh, it's going to welcome you. You see, we list the requirements again, and we're telling folks right then and there, be ready to upload this information. Okay. Then you're going to, you're going to start by, is your business located in Johnson County? And if you say yes, it's going to ask you to upload a, something to support that. If you say no, which I don't know, hopefully after you've read, we're going to tell you you're not eligible. Okay. So if you say yes, it's gonna ask you to upload some document to support that. We're gonna ask you how many employees do you have? So if I enter five, whoops, I enter the number five to move forward. It's gonna say upload an employee roster. And again, first name, last name, that's all we need. And then finally, we're gonna ask you, did you incur expenses and or related revenue loss totals at least 10,000. If you say yes, we're going to ask you to upload the documentation. So have that ready to do right then and there. Those are the three criteria that make you eligible for the grant. Then as we move forward, we start to ask basic information. We need to name your business. If it goes by a trade name, something other than your legal name, we ask you to give us that. We ask two questions related to minority owned and are you veteran owned? That does not have any bearing on who gets grants. It is really for more of a reporting purposes, both for us to understand at the county as well as at the federal level. So it's, those are simply yes, no. Bus when was your business established? We need contact information. So your phone number, your email address. You can't use a PO box. So make sure um, we get your full address. Zip code, we'll check, we'll verify against. These are all the zip codes in Johnson County. So if you were to try to give us one that's not, we're going to tell you, we're going to ask why. We ask you what type of entity, LLC, sole proprietorship, so on and so forth. Again, doesn't have a bearing. We just are using this opportunity to kind of get some data to look across, to get some interesting business information. EIN, uh, uh, DUNS number, if you don't have those, if you're a sole proprietorship, we, this is when the only time we would say, then we'll need your social security number. But if you're not a sole proprietorship, it will not ask you for that. And we don't want it. Questions yet? 
There is one. Um, all of my utility bills, my uh, my DBA is listed versus my LLC name. Can I include my EIN to prove my yes. LLC is my DBA, which I believe kind of is covered right here. And I would encourage folks in that situation, just don't be afraid to just write something on that doc, on that utility bill to say, you know, DBA, blah, 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 with an EIN. And that's enough verification for us. Okay. Jeff, and, and there is no problem if you work out of your home, correct? No. Um, yeah. No. As long as you're, well, as long as your home's in Johnson County. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yes. Requirement. no. No, we, are, we, we intentionally want to include, um, and I've had a number of people uh, send emails already saying, hey, I work out of my house. Um, this is kind of where we ended up with um, uh, deciding to accept utility bills. We had somebody that says, look, I work out of my house, and fortunately for them, my house is paid off, so I don't have a lease, I don't have a rental agreement, and I, nor do I have a mortgage. So you're asking me for one of those documents, and we said, you know what, the, the states can use utility bills as verification. So that's why we said, just send us a utility bill then of where you're working out of to prove. We just have to have some documents to show that you're in Johnson County. And Jeff, if it's in that individual's name versus the company's name, because I assume if they're out of their home, it's not, the co their home's not going to be in the company's name. If that's fine, correct? Yeah, I would, again, make a note of that for us, you know, because the sole proprietorship probably is going to be in their own name, but just make a note of what the business name is. Okay. So that there's direct correlation between yeah. the two, yeah. but the, but the home doesn't have to be in something LLC. It could be that individual's name. Correct. I mean, no. there was a question in regard to that. No. Okay. We just need to be able to make that connection. Okay. okay. Great. Yep. Any more? Um, there was uh, some of the same questions about um, setting up um uh, accounting systems and QuickBooks. Um, uh, um, and I think you've answered about whether or not if they've received PPP funding, they are eligible for the grant. Um, there is a question on um, losses. Do you want that? It's um, my business suffered a significant loss from March to June, but not show a total loss of revenue over the year. Is that okay? Yes. As, yes. As long as that loss get, shows that they've had at least $10,000. It could, as I think as Tim mentioned earlier, you could show me in, in March, in the very first month, that look, I suffered $10,000 right there. Um, and that will suffice. It, it's not, you know, we just had to limit the period. The reason it's March is that's when, uh, most of your uh, mandates came out that, for instance, in the uh, re uh, restaurant bar business, that's when the mandate came for them to shut down, right? The other is, if we did year over year, some people could have had really good January and Februarys and, and not be able to show the loss when it really happens. So March is sort of when um, things kicked in, the mandates kicked in, the restrictions kicked in, and then we took it up all the way to October 31 to give you as long a period as time that you've been dealing with this uh, pandemic to show a loss, okay? Jeff, there was another question about when a business was, was started. Um, it said, what if a business was out, not open in March of 19, they had a, a soft open in June and went uh, then fully open in August of 19. Is that, where, when did they need to start their business and be up and running? Uh, if they were open in August of 19, and they can show that they had expenses incurred by directly related to COVID, um, I, I guess if there was an, if they could show enough revenue loss, there's no, you know, we don't have any kind of restriction up front that says you had to open by March 1 of 2019. That, that's not a, that's not a restriction. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, they could open January 1 of 20 then this year and then show loss through yes. this year. That what yes, you're they certainly wouldn't yep. be, well, they wouldn't be able to show the revenue loss. They'd have to show the expenses. They wouldn't have it. You have to show your revenue loss 2020 over 2019. Okay. If you weren't open in 2019. You can't, you can't show that you had a loss because you weren't in business. It would have to be all expense related. Yep. A okay. quick question on um, clarifying employees versus contractors. Do you list the contractors as well, as well or just employees? No, just employees. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. So, so the next screen, the next 
uh, section of the application process. We would like to know what industry you're in. So what sector? So you would pick one of these. Um, I will tell you, um, if you pick arts and entertainment, we ask for some additional information. What type of arts and entertainment are you? Again, just pick, um, pick one that, that best fits what you do. Anytime you pick an other in this application process, you're gonna ask, be asked to explain it. So if you said I was in other arts entertainment, well, what is that, okay? Otherwise you would pick whatever most best fits the type of business you're in. Then we're gonna ask you if you, were, if you uh, had expenses related to these items. So these are check. If so, whatever items you check, we ask, give us an estimate of the amounts that you spent on those items. So this should correlate to the documentation that you sent with respect to expenses. Okay. Then here's where we ask you, did you suffer a loss? And you would put in, you would put in that revenue loss. Hypothet or hypothetically, we'll say 10,001. And again, that's where your documentation has to support that. Then we get into um, any questions before we move to the next section? Um, I think, Jeff, the only question that, you know, um, um, was when, when would the link be up and running? And I assume this isn't, is this out there right now on ECJC's page or is that? Um, the link, the um, link, the link is out there today, but if okay. other than this time period that I'm sitting with you right now, I opened this up so I could walk through it myself. Okay. It actually, it actually is still password protected at this time. If you, once I'm done with this call, I will reset this, the, the platform allows me to put the time and date that it's open. It's gonna open November 4th at 10 a.m. precisely. So if you try to get in before, you're gonna get a message that says, it's not open, sorry, not open yet. Open to November 4th, 10 a.m. And again, we're time stamping every application. So um, even right now, if somebody jumps to the link and tries to fill out an app, I'll see it, it came in on today and today, today at this time, and then it won't be eligible. So Jeff, they can't prepare or have it all and then just press go. They've got to no. on a particular day, yep. get in, yep. upload everything and do it. Unfortunately, yeah, it, it, that's the way we have to operate it. So it opens up. That's why it's going to, it's, it's imperative scanned and then on their computer. So because it's asking you to upload. So you would just go to your own um, uh, files grab them and upload them right then and there, then complete the application and you're done. And it's time stamped and in the system. So it's probably best to have all this information ready to go, all of it at that particular time. And, and, I'll tell you, and Tim, I know you know this because you've been involved, yeah. you Tracy others. We originally were thinking of a two-step process. You apply, don't give us any information. Um, we would, you know, based on your answers, if you're eligible and you were in the first 1,350, we would reach back out for the documentation. Unfortunately, the time frame with which we have to get this done and the checks, the federal um, program requires that this money be, be distributed by December 30, which we're hoping we'll get it out before then. But the time frame, as we walked through the process, we said, we can't afford to lose two weeks trying to track down people to get the documentation, you know, after they've applied. Um, it just was really a timing and a manpower issue that we said, well, let's minimize the documentation we need, but they're gonna have to upload it at the time of the application. So if it were me, I would have, I would know where my three, you know, I would have my, my whatever it is, my utility bill in a file, I would have my um, employee roster in a file, and I would have my expense receipts scanned or doc documentation scanned in a file. And if I'm offering revenue law, if I'm using revenue loss, same thing, have that p &L statement or something like that, already scanned it in. So when I, first thing I do when I come in here is, am I located in Johnson County? Yes, upload that utility bill. Do I have, I have 20 employees, upload your roster. I have expenses, upload the expenses, upload that. Then you're just gonna go through and answer these questions. Yep. Okay. Got it. Yep. So then we're asking you, what are you going to be used for? Because there are some restrictions on what this money can be given out um, and used for. 
So we're asking you um, across these categories. The questions that come in have, that I've had so far tend to relate to inventory and equipment. When they said, well, it's on there so I can buy equipment. It has to be inventory and or equipment that is directly related to COVID. It cannot be general business. I just want to add some inventory or I got a cool piece of equipment I've always wanted to buy. It is not, cannot be used for that, okay? Um, and then again, if you say other, we're gonna ask you what that is. So then we do ask you, have you received funding from the local city, county, state, federal, whatever? If, when you answer yes, it's gonna give you these categories. So we're asking you, did you get a PPP? Um, if you read, I don't know how big this appears on, on, on everybody's screens, but we're telling you, this does not eliminate you from this grant. We just have to capture stuff reporting purposes. So if you said I got a PPP and then I don't, we're going to ask you how much. Doesn't matter how much you got. It, it does not have any bearing on whether you get the grant or not. Okay. We're just trying to find out. Um, this helps reporting back, particularly at the uh, federal level of, you know, the type, how effective were the programs, how many people used them, so on and so forth. So we can provide that kind of data. Okay. So you could have gotten a spark grant from Kansas. Um, there are, we are asking about other programs because we do want to make sure people aren't kind of double dipping in the, in the county programs. There are, there's some um, other programs that um, may apply to some businesses. So depending on what you check, it's gonna ask you for that amount. Again, does not have a bearing on whether you get a grant in this program or not. We're not, we're not stack ranking based on who got the least amount of PPP or idle or none or whatsoever. So Jeff, there was a question and I, I think you just answered it and it's interesting, I didn't know this. Um, if a business had, let's say a loss of more than $10,000, they apply for this grant. They cannot go and apply for a different grant to cover PPE, is that correct? Like if you have, if you want to spend money on PPE expenses like, she shields, masks, mm -hmm. other things like that. Can you apply for this and that grant through the county as well too? There are other grants to the county, correct? And I mean, and we're not- Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. I, I, um, there, there was one, that, I know there was one that had to do with um, rent. And so if you, if, you, if you applied here saying revenue loss and I've got to pay my rent, you can't apply to the other county program saying, I need you to help me with the rent. Now, if you had PPE expense and had not used that as a uh, factor in the, in, in the other funding that you received, you could use it here. Say that again, Jeff, you broke up, I apologize. You broke oh, up. Okay. Um, as, well, I guess the base, best way to say it here is if you've had expenses that you have not used in any application for any other program, state, local, city, whatever, you can use those here. Just like, um, uh, just like I mentioned in March for me to reopen, I had to hire, uh, you know, Jeff's sanitation service to come in every night, spray the desk, wipe everything down. And so for March, April, May, June, man, I have whatever big office, those expenses were $8,000. Well, I've also paid them in July, August, September, and I'm going to pay them in October. And that's going to be another $8,000 that you didn't, you, you haven't used whatever I just said, June, July, August, or July, August, September, October. You haven't used that expense to apply for any other program. You can use that. Buying okay. PPE, you know, between masks and, and other stuff is still ongoing. And so yep. those expenses, what we're trying to prevent, obviously, is double, is those that may try to double dip and get reimbursed for the same expense. So if you've got more than $10,000 in other expenses, mm -hmm. you can show, hey, I'm using this grant for that 10,000, but I've got more and I'm gonna go for a different yes. grant county. Yes. Okay, so that you can, you can, as long as you're just not, they're just not showing right. the exact same expenses. Right. I haven't uploaded the exact same re receipts to three different programs and I got three different grants, okay? Got it. It's to be expenses that have not been reimbursed. Okay. So you would, you would uh, identify any of those programs you've used, give us the amounts, and then basically we're asking you to verify that you have not used these expenses 
for any other program. Got it. Okay. Yep. Then we move to the next section, which is basically the last section. So we need your name and your, your role and your phone number and your contact. And then you've got to consent to us that the information you provided to us is, is, tr is factual. And then we're gonna ask you to sign and you will actually, I'm using my mouse, sign whatever line you wanna sign. Now I'm gonna hit submit and you're gonna see, it's gonna take me back to everything I didn't fill out. Okay, so you can save, you have the ability at any time to save and resume later, but I'm gonna tell you, it's time stamped, and that's going to determine who gets the grants. So the thought of, hey, I'll go in and do some of it this morning. When it opens at 10, I can get back in this afternoon at four, and maybe I'll finish tomorrow. As a, just as a comparative, when the state announced the small business grants for the SPARC program, they had over 7,000 in the first few hours. So we are anticipating more applicants than we will have grants. So having the information ready to go and ready to be completed will be, I think, pertinent to your opportunity to get a $10,000 grant. Okay? So Jeff, they should not get on now though and start filling it no. out. And then- No, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. There was no way for us to, to set it up to where you could do any in advance and then hit a button. Yep. Uh, this is the same platform the state used. It worked well for them. So when-, when uh, the county decided about the program and, and decided the Enterprise Center was going to implement it. I reached out to the Kansas Commerce and said, let's tell me about your experience using this platform. How did it work? It worked well. They asked for a lot more information than we did. Um, so we, we've tried to whittle this down to the minimum amount of information necessary um, to meet the federal requirements uh, as well as determine eligibility. Jeff, on... Um Related to the application, we had somebody question, um, will you reach out to people if you have questions on submitted documents or will you just move on to the ne next application? Um, Say if they were one of the first, you know, 400. Yeah, if you're, if you're in the, if you would be eligible, I mean, let's say you're in that first 1,350 and we have a question, you know, you've submitted documentation um, and, and, and there's a discrepancy. We, we will make every effort to reach out and verify, okay? That said, if you didn't upload documentation, we're not gonna call and say, hey, did you accidentally forget to do, we just, I, I, I am probably, in, the other thing um, I should tell folks is, we will turn off the application when we hit, a number well past 1,350. Um, so we're not gonna leave it open and end up with, with 10, 11, 12,000 applicants. Cause one, the federal requirements uh, were required to store this data for six years. And so the more we collect, the more we have to deal with. So we will um, probably look at a number closer to more like 3,000 when we get to 3,000. Therefore, you know, that's more than enough to say, look, some number didn't submit stuff or um, those things, we, we just don't have the time or really the manpower to, to have to reach out to a thousand people in, you know, uh, this will open the fourth, I would anticipate we'll have more than enough applications in, in 24 to 48 hours or so, um, and then we have to start verifying. And we're using most of the team at ECJC to verify. Um, so clearly if it looks like like, um, let's say hypothetically, uh, it looked like you uploaded something and we can't read a number or something. We would reach out via email and say, hey, we just need to verify a number and do that on those, on those that would otherwise be eligible, right? Because once we get to, to 1,350, um, that's, that's the total amount of money that the county has allocated to um, for this grant program. Other um, yeah, well, one other thing, and I think you, Jeff, you were getting some questions asked that I think you've answered, um, and I just want to share share with um, the group, you know, the folks on the call. We are recording this. This will be uploaded. You can go back through, and it will be on the chamber's website, um, and and you can 
peruse through what Jeff has said um, once again. Also, and Jeff, you might talk about um, the future calls that you're going to have. And, you know, if you have questions, um, well, you. can you state that again, if, if they have questions that need to be asked? Sure. sure. Um, thanks for reminding me, Tim. There'll be another call um, tomorrow. What, today is Wednesday, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thursday at 9 a.m., the Overland Park Chamber is having a very similar call, well, same call, if you will. I'm going to go through the same information, uh, but it's open to everybody as well. So if, if, if you came in late or, or you, you want to join again, feel free to do that. At, at noon tomorrow, um, the Enterprise Center will host a webinar. It's going to be me again, and I'll have some other folks from the Enterprise Center there, but same, same content. We're going to do the same thing. Friday at 1.30, the Leewood Chamber uh, has asked me to join them. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that at 1.30 on Friday. So again, you'd have a chance to sit in there. If you have any questions that you just, you know, you, you don't have time, I appreciate your running a business and so on. You can send an email at any time to info, I-N-F-O, info at ECJC, which is Enterprise Center in Johnson County. So ecjc.com. And we've been getting those since we announced the program. There's several of us that, that, that see that, in, that inbox and we try to get you a response as quickly as possible. So don't hesitate to ask anything that you, that, that, that you think you need to know to be prepared. The goal is to have, get the word out to all small businesses in Johnson County and have them prepared so everybody has an opportunity, the same opportunity to get a grant. Jeff, can you, um, there was a question about how many businesses, and I know this is hard for us to tell how many businesses do we think can apply. Also, you might talk a little bit about how much funding we have and, you know, um, being on the committee, you, you and I were on, we asked the county for a lot more money <laughs> than yeah. what they, they granted us. So I will tell you um, that the committee asked for more than what we were, we were given to grant out small businesses, but go ahead. True. We um, well from a from as I mentioned earlier, depending on which source you use and, and how you slice and dice it, there's somewhere between really nineteen thousand and some will say as much as twenty two thousand businesses in Johnson County. Now, um, if you if you look at if you start to segment those, clearly when you say one to fifty, you're going to hit ninety almost ninety five percent of that total is in that category. So it's a it, it's a lot. Of businesses now, what we're hoping is, if if you've if you've gotten through this or or, or managing to get through this the COVID epidemic, and your business is stable, that you won't apply. Quite frankly, right? Ten thousand dollars is a meaningful amount, but not so much that um, if I'm running a, a ten million dollar year business, I'm not sure I'm going to spend the time and effort to do this. And as you recall, Tim, we tried to put in a, a total revenue uh, number that, would, that you'd have to hit. But as, we, as I learned working with the county and others, any, any eligibility requirement that we put in would require collecting documentation. So we whittled this down to just the bare minimums. The county, um, when we started this, the exercise to determine what we're gonna do for small business stabilization, there was some idea that maybe it would be around five or six million dollars. We, uh, we, the, the team, and Tim was a part of that, as were several others. We basically looked at, at other communities similar in size and said, "Wait a minute, that's not that's not nearly enough." You know, we can show you other counties that are smaller, some that are slightly larger, doing a bigger number. So we um, we threw out a much bigger number. Uh, the county came back and said, look, we can allocate $13.5 million out of this, out of this, this pool was, um, uh, that, that clearly was the largest portion uh, of that pool that any, organi uh, any, any group that was working on what could, these funds could be used for had submitted. Uh, we even convinced some of the other teams that were asking for some of that pool that this was the right thing to do. So, um, you know, we pushed, we pushed it to the limit to get the $13.5 million. Um, I continue to push with them. Um, if there's more, can you find it? <laughs> because once the process is set up, we have it, uh, which is why also we've agreed to take 
um, considerably more applications than 1,350. One, some won't meet eligibility because they didn't support us, but what if the county were um, to see that there are some other funds? We could just go down the line from the 1351, 52, 53, 54, and give more uh, out if we have more. So, you know, Tim, you and I talked, I, we, I wish they had given us $50 million um, because we would, I think we have enough need to do that. Um, yeah. Everything's finite. So it's 13.5 million. You do simple math, we're going to give it out 1,350. So we don't have to take out any of that funds to cover the administration of the program or anything. All of those, that 13.5 million will be given out. Yeah, I, I think we asked we asked for more than double that than that. <laughs> and and um, yeah. I think our our ask was somewhere in the 30 million dollar range, and we were granted 13. We're happy to receive that um, and get that out. Um, there's some additional questions, Jeff, and I think we've answered them, but I'm, I'm going to go over it again, and I think I can. Um, if you received a PPP loan, you can go back and receive this funding. That does not exclude you from this. Um, and so that even if you did receive, Jeff, and correct me if I'm wrong, you received PPP money to help offset um, costs, you can still go back. That doesn't exclude you from going back and asking the county to help pay for, you know, those same losses that you showed in the PPP, correct? I mean, it doesn't, the, the, what we can't show is that the county, you're applying for a county grant to offset those same expenses that were, um, you showed during that time thing, correct? Does that make sense? I think so. You cut out a little bit on me. I guess the, the, the point, you cannot use the same expenses um, across for multiple times, right? So, so I, I had a, I have a, a, I have a client that had a contract and was going to pay me, you know, $5,000 a month and he canceled the contract because he's, he had to temporarily close his business, right? So I, I when I got my PP, when I got my idle loan, I submitted that to help justify it, right? I cannot yep. use that same five thousand dollar lost contract that I lost for this program because you've already. It's sort of think of it as think of it in terms of your taxes, right? I, I, here's all my here's all my expenses that I can deduct. Then I can't deduct them twice on some other page of my taxes. That's probably not a great analogy. I'm sorry. But you can't use the same expense for multiple programs, at least for this program. But Jeff, is that through the county or is that all federal programs? Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna plead ignorance on the federal programs because I couldn't keep up with the ever changing landscape that the Treasury Department put out. Um, I, I know, I know when well, it came. To PP I, I guess Jeff, what I'm asking is if. You applied for a spark grant through the state and you received forty thousand dollars from um, the state for the spark grant to cover some expenses. Can you apply here and show that you had losses? Um, you know, those same losses. Does no. that can you not apply again for this? Yes. You cannot, you cannot use those same expenses that, that helped you get the $40,000 grant from the state to help you get a $10,000 grant from Johnson County. But if you had more than the $40,000 expense, okay. exactly. definitely. The, the reason that. being, Tim, is if you trace it all back, it's all really coming from the same pool. All this yeah. came out of the CARES Act. And what they're saying at the federal level is you used expenses to get $40,000 of our money, of our federal money that was distributed through the state of Kansas. Now you're using the exact same expenses to get another $10,000 that was distributed through the county, but it's still the same federal pool. Does that, um, does that make any sense? So, yeah. But, but as we said earlier, if you had $40,000 in expenses when you applied for the SPARC grant, now, now let's say you got that um, two months ago. You've incurred new expenses since you got the SPARC grant that add up to ten thousand dollars or more. You can definitely use them. Even, let's say it was let's say it was rent. Okay, so when I applied for the SPARC grant, I used rent for uh, uh, May, June, July, and 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 that's what I used to rationalize why I needed the grant. Now I'm into um, September, October, November, and my revenue loss that I can show. I got to pay my rent. You could use your rent 
from different months. Okay. Okay. Just like I mentioned, if you're paying somebody to come in and sanitize your office and they're charging you like a cleaning service to do this additional service, you know, that's running every month or every day, actually, when they come in, you could have used those expenses previously up to some other time, up to May or June or July. Now from, you know, August, September, October, I still, I'm still having to do it because this thing hasn't gone away. And, and Jeff, and, and we're up against our time limit and I apologize, um, but you can show a combination, and this is the one last question that I'll ask, and then we'll, we'll let you go. And, um, but you can show revenue loss and expenses. So say you have a revenue loss of 5,000 and you've got uh, um, expenses of 5,000, you, you can show that together to show that and apply for that um, to get to the $10,000 mark, correct? Yes. 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 All so right. I'm gonna stop sharing so you can see my head. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it, it's not either or. It's cumulative. So, Got it. you know, $3,800 in expenses and $7,800 in revenue loss, you're over the $10,000 limit, right? And as you, yeah. as you and I talked about, for simplicity of the purpose, we set a single value for the grant. Because some people have said, well, what if I had $7,800? Could you give me $7,800? We just, in a timely and efficient fashion, can't do it. Yeah. So we said $10,000. Um, you've got to show a combination expenses, revenue loss, or expenses alone, or revenue loss alone doesn't matter. Just get over the ten thousand dollar mark. Got it. Okay, Jeff. Thank you very, very, very much for coming on, and and Ali, thank you for sponsoring this. And once again, this is being recorded. We will be showing this on our website as well too. So if you want to go back and look at um, questions and answers to this. We will have it uploaded. Please feel free to reach out to Jeff directly at ECJC or get on the additional calls that um, Jeff spoke about earlier today. So once again, thank you guys very, very much. This is very important information and, and our businesses are unfortunately struggling. And I think this is a wonderful thing that the county's doing.